Hey, it's Dave Brown here, host of Now with Dave Brown on AMI. Check out this latest highlight from the show. Access Now is expanding their presence through a new partnership with Regional Tourism Organization 4. The RTO 4 covers four regions in Ontario, Huron County, Perth County, the Waterloo, Waterloo Region, and Wellington County. Access Now is a crowdsourced app that allows users to search for nearby places that are accessible and it allows users to input their experiences with accessibility in public spaces like stores and restaurants. The data includes information pertaining to mobility, sensory, cognitive, auditory, and visual accessibility. Mayan Ziv has more details on the new partnership and what it means moving forward. Mayan is the founder and CEO of Access Now. Mayan, so great to chat with you this morning. Thank you for making a little bit of time. Hi, Dave. So a huge part of this collaboration is done through uh, what you call a map mission. This is a new expression to me. What's a map mission? So a map mission is kind of like an accessibility scavenger hunt. The idea is really to task people with searching for information about accessibility in their own neighborhoods. So armed with the Access Now app, people go out into their own streets and look at coffee shops, restaurants, offices, parks, you name it, and start to actually review the information that they come across. So the idea is for us by the end of a map mission to come away with a lot more rich insight about the types of accessibility that we can expect to see at places in that neighborhood. So going a bit deeper into this individual partnership, what came out of the map mission with RTO4? So we've been running map missions at Access Now for years, like really from the very beginning, the idea behind map missions were really to kind of create some growth hacking. So ways to get information on the Access Now app so that people can find better insights about accessibility. And fast forward to today, uh, organizations like RTO4 are leveraging map missions to also engage their community and their stakeholders. And I think that's a really, really cool kind of ex uh, example of what we can do when we partner. It's really providing people with the opportunity to be their own agents of change, share information about accessibility in their own neighborhoods, as opposed to waiting around for somebody else to come along and do it. In this map mission, like you said, some of it was very particular and some of it's been ongoing for a long time. How did these regions stack up with a little bit of audit and a little bit of extra eyes? So, you know, it, it's always quite a diverse range of, of insights that we find from places being fully accessible to those that kind of rank in the partially or not accessible category, uh, as well as the insights that are specific to why those places were reviewed as such. So, you know, we saw automatic doors, we saw accessible parking spots, we we look also for digital accessibility of payment systems. There's a whole uh, wide range of different types of features that we prompt people to share, but it's also very much based on people's observed lived experiences. So this isn't an audit. We're not out here to you know take measuring tapes and conduct a full end-to-end uh, -end assessment, but really we're inviting people to collect what they observe and and start the conversation. So. I think this was a really healthy engagement. It also provided people with a lot of opportunities to learn more for those that are maybe less familiar with accessibility mm. in their own region. And now hopefully we've created some new allies who can tasked with this new mission, continue to share that good information. Yeah, Mayan, go a little bit deeper onto that side of it because I've always long admired the way that your app works and the way your app leverages that crowdsourcing that's meant to be observational and really be pragmatic in what it puts forward for someone to enhance their experience no matter where they wanna go. But when you talk about a broader partnership like this, what's the benefit that the partnership brings to the table beyond just the incredible everyday users that are already contributing to the app success? Really what we're doing here is creating active agency. So, uh, you know, one of my big frustrations with the way that accessibility has kind of not progressed uh, at, at the, the pace that I think and many other uh, accessibility activists have spoken about is that unless people are actually experiencing the barriers or leaving their offices and actually witnessing the types of things that we're advocating for 
it becomes very difficult to motivate those folks to actually pursue change, uh, to remove those barriers. So the idea behind the work that we do in partnership uh, with organizations like RTO4, uh, corporate partners, municipalities, I mean, it's quite a, a range of different types of people we work with and organizations, but the idea is to give people the power to not only create experiential learning opportunities to generate empathy, but also to provide people with direct access to create change. So it doesn't matter if you know you are just a citizen living in your own community and you want to contribute because you want to raise awareness about barriers that people might not be recording. Uh, or if you know you're at the highest level of government where you can now look at that data across the board and start to see some patterns about you know, where within a community are people facing more barriers or what's going well that we can celebrate and use that as a as a testimonial for leadership to inspire others to do the mm. same. In the past, you've described accessibility as a mindset, which I think is a really interesting way to look at it. I was in Montreal, my old hometown, a couple of weeks ago, and I was using the subway system, the metro system, which to my experience as someone who's legally blind has always been very kind and very good to me. But I imagine from a wheelchair access point of view, it's quite awful. Because I went to a number of stations where there was no elevator, no stairs, no escalator, no nothing. And I'm talking about like major core downtown metro stations. And I wonder if maybe that relates at all to that mindset thing, perpetually keeping your eye on things and making observations that might not even necessarily directly relate to my lived experience, but it's an accessibility consideration that I hope people would be mindful of. Yeah, I mean, I, I like to say accessibility is a mindset because it really pushes people to think about it beyond compliance. A lot of people consider accessibility to be this thing that you, you know, look down a checklist on after you've made a decision just to make sure that you've covered your bases. And that really is so, so far away from uh, helping people to manifest very um, uh, meaningful senses of accessibility or inclusion. Uh, you know, it's very hard to get to that if you haven't considered accessibility throughout the entire process that you've you know, started your idea, designed your idea, engaged with stakeholders all the way until production and, and marketing materials. At every single point along the way, accessibility should really be integrated within the thinking and the development process. So I always like to kind of spark that idea because I think it really helps people to reposition the concept of accessibility. And once you think about accessibility as this open-ended uh, opportunity for exploration, it also helps to generate creativity and innovation. And, you know, I think accessibility does a lot for, for creating new, uh, exciting ways that people engage with the world. And we really have to move away from thinking about it as this like utilitarian toolbox that just solves a problem for, a, you know, a subsection of the population. It's so much more than that. Mm. Access Now started quite humbly as a Toronto-based project. You're now operating in over 107 countries, which is like remarkable and amazing. And I know this question is probably a little bit obvious, but I do want to hear your answer. How are you feeling about that kind of growth with something that you started with such humble origins? Well, you know, Dave, I I never set out to build a company or do anything um, that I was really aware of was happening at the time. I was just really motivated to solve a problem. It was a problem that, you know, I resonated with as a wheelchair user. Accessibility has been something that has always been on my mind. And I just became very frustrated with the fact that there weren't proper solutions that responded to my questions about accessibility. And I think the reason that Access Now has been successful to date is because we've never defined access or been the expert. Access Now is owned by the community of people who contribute, which means that accessibility, the way we define it, what we share inform information about is consistently evolving and growing. And as people engage and say, I want information about lowered counters, or I want information about lighting levels or sound levels, you know, regardless of what people's insights or, or requirements are, 
our goal is to be able to facilitate that information sharing. And so I think that's really why it's been so successful is because it it's really, it, it belongs to everyone. And, and that seems to have resonated with people who for a very long time have felt like they haven't had a voice in the equation. Mayan, to zoom out here even a little bit further, at the core of this show is platforming people with disabilities who are leaders in the field and leaders in the world and giving them a space to share their thoughts and opinions. International Day of Persons with Disabilities is this weekend. What's a closing thought that you would wanna leave for businesses and organizations when it comes to inclusion? I'd say that there's nothing too small that can start that spark. Uh, to create really meaningful change. I think a lot of people are afraid to act because they don't want to do the wrong thing or say the wrong thing. And specifically business owners I've heard from are always afraid of the risk associated with getting things wrong. The problem though becomes that then they don't do anything. And so, you know, there's the, the opportunity for change happens in that growth, in that trial and error and in that humbleness to invite people who have not traditionally been invited to contribute to have that space to do so. So if you are a person out there thinking, you know, I want to create a change, all it starts with doing is kind of raising your voice and having the confidence to believe that your perspective matters because it does. Mayan, congratulations on all the success with Access Now. Keep up the excellent work. All the best to you, and hopefully you and I get a chance to connect again down the road. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Dave. That's Mayan Ziv, founder and CEO of Access Now. For more information on Access Now, please visit accessnow.com. That's accessnow.com. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv or download the podcasts wherever you listen. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv or download the podcasts wherever you listen.